you want to be able to tell real stories, not just selling you a t-shirt, but actually you can understand the, the process behind it. Make something a bit different so that when a customer comes within our space, uh, they'll see something different, something unique, and hopefully tell their friends about it and come back and see it again and again. It's quite difficult to do uh, anything totally different. So you've got to find a way to be creative enough, but also to make sense. Below ground, we see that as a space um, where you can come together. It's why we have a recording studio as part of it. The, the concept of Below Ground is essentially a multi-brand space uh, within Landmark. It rotates different types of brands and concepts through it. Um, we have about six to seven spaces. Always something new, something different. Um, it changes anywhere between weekly to monthly and then usually brings in anything from fashion, retail, art, music, uh, anything really within the space um, with a variety of things such as collaborations with luxury brands, local independent designers um, or new to market international brands that come into Below Ground. When we look at brands for the space, we usually look at someone who's trying to do something a bit different. So we balance out local. We always want to support local creativity in the local scene, as well as you know, bringing some international stuff for the first time to Hong Kong. So local stuff is, uh, needs more of a, a platform to be showcased on. So uh, we've been very fortunate to do that in Landmark, but also working with some amazing international brands who can do something a little bit different than maybe what they normally do. Can do that in Below Ground reasonably easily. So we've had some really amazing stuff from brands like Sakai, Human Made, brands that have never really been in a space like this. Is we've had a pretty diverse community within Below Ground. Um, we've had everyone from kids uh, all the way up to 80 year olds dancing outside of our recording studio. They want to see something new, they want to see something different and they want to see something a little bit interesting in Hong Kong. You know, Landmark has a perception of being this amazing luxury home, which we still are, um, but Below Ground plays a, a slightly different part of that and brings in a slightly new customer base um, into the uh, heart of Central. Two moments to me really kind of stand out. First was uh, bringing Futura to Hong Kong and we did a big space and concept with him in Below Ground. Idols in my life, he's an amazing uh, person and what he's done in art and the whole culture really. Um, and the other thing is a slightly different thing. We had a, an arcade game concept in Landmark in Below Ground and it was amazing because I, I came down here one day and I saw a dad sitting with his son playing on the arcade games and it was just a really amazing moment to see the two generations kind of coming together within one space in Below Ground, but also seeing something different in, in Landmark. You know, you don't usually see people playing street Street Fighter in a luxury shopping mall, um, but it worked really well. And actually, as it turned out, they were some of our top customers. So it really kind of showed that even something as simple as an arcade game can bring people together. Young customers are always looking for something new. They're looking for something fresh. I think in particular, the younger generation looks for something that's authentic. I think people are looking for authentic experiences, um, particularly having gone through COVID. When we come out of it, we want people to really experience things that they can really not just do online, but they need to be doing physically. So Below Ground, we see that as a space where you can come together. It's why we have a recording studio as part of it. We want to be able to tell real stories, not just selling you a t-shirt, but actually you can understand the process behind it. So I think that going forward will be a key thing for retail to do. The luxury brands for many years have done that very well. Well, you've seen them start to shift to that in the past kind of 10 years. The Louis Vuitton, traditionally who does trunks, has taken over a basketball court or um, Madison Square Gardens for NBA. Um, so you know, telling stories to a different type of customer base I think is going to be the important part of retail going forward. Yeah. The pandemic has probably also shifted us to support more local as well. Telling a story to local customers. Local customers want to see some local representation as well. So it's really given an opportunity for local brands to have more of a platform, which I, I think is amazing. I think Hong Kong's creative scene is, is really coming back to life. I think it had a, a bit of a period where it was a little bit quiet. And um, I think actually, like I said, I think with COVID, but also there's an amazing young generation of people who are coming through at the moment who are really representing, you know, in all sorts of different things, whether that's art, music, tattoos, there's amazing uh, fashion stuff as well coming through in Hong Kong at the moment. To me, it's a really great thing that the Hong Kong creative scene is booming at the moment. It's booming in all sorts of sectors, it seems. We get a lot of people asking to do stuff with us and we're trying to reach out to get people. So it's, it's a great thing for, to see that kind of really uh, increasing and improving over the past couple of years, yeah. I'm very lucky to, to do that and work with an amazing team. I think the other side of the job that requires a lot of creativity is really always continuing to adapt. Uh, remaining ahead of your competition uh, is a key thing and you do have to be creative to do that. Um, you know, a lot of stuff, uh, particularly in what we do in real estate and retail, is quite difficult to do anything totally different. So you've got to find a way to be creative enough, but also to make sense in what you're doing, whether that's strategically or financially or wherever you're looking at it. Um, but we do a lot of stuff to try and push the envelope a little bit and try and make something a bit different so that when a customer comes within our space, uh, they'll see something different, something unique, and hopefully tell their friends about it and come back and see it again and again. The challenging part is also staying ahead of competition. Evolving changes, I'd say, customers and staying ahead of your competition to ensure that you're you know, really doing something different and engaging with all sorts of age uh, customers, I think is a challenge, but it's a good challenge and it's something that we rise up to for sure.
Yeah, there's one thing that I love to share with you that really reminds me of my family. Uh, reminds me of the supporting of the creative side, which is actually the ring I always wear on my finger every day. They're based in England, um, so I wear this every day. It? And it means a lot to me. My parents supported me to go the creative route a lot of my life. I have a lot of smart uh, children in my family, siblings. So I've been the one who went a slightly creative route. So this reminds me to be creative um, and continue to do what I'm doing.